Hi everybody, it's Millie and you are here at Crafting in My PJs. Okay, so this video is a little bit different. We don't actually have a craft today. I have somebody who requested that I do a video of my 10 favorite crafting tools. So I'm gonna try, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go over 10, but I will try to keep it to as close to 10 as I can. All right, so we have two things to do before we get to this video. So number one is please hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to our channel. Um, just hit that little subscribe word and doesn't cost you anything. And you'll then be able to see any video I put out. And my videos focus on easy, simple crafts that anybody can do. So if you're into that and I have a lot of Dollar Tree crafts because that seems to be my favorite place. Okay, second thing is, what is your favorite crafting tool? I don't care who makes it. I don't care if you have any affiliations with any specific companies. Just what is your favorite thing that you got to have? If you had to evacuate for a hurricane, like we sometimes have to do, what are you gonna make sure you take with you? All right, so please put that in the comments section below because I wanna learn about new things or different things that are out there. Okay, um, and then just a caveat here, I am not affiliated with anybody. I am not an Amazon influencer. So I'm gonna put all the links to things that I show you in the description. A lot of those links are Amazon links, um, but I don't get anything from them. So click on them, buy if you want, buy if you don't want, price it out, however. Um, second thing is I don't sell anything. So I'm not creative memories. I am not stamping up. I don't even know what the other companies are. Close to my heart, I don't know. Is that still open? Is that still out there? Anyway, some of my products will be Creative Memories and Stampin' Up! products. I don't sell them. I used to sell Creative Memories decades ago, like literally almost 20 years ago. But I only sold them in order to get my tools that I wanted to start scrapbooking at a lower cost. And then I had a little bit of fun along the way. And so anyway, um, so I think that's it. So we're gonna get down to the table, more or less, and I'm gonna show you what I picked. All right. All right, so the first tool tool on my list is this, uh, We Are Memory Keepers, and I've seen a lot of different brands out there, but this is the one I happen to have. We Are Memory Keepers um, crafting mat. It's like a self-healing mat, so when you slice on it, you, you can maybe feel it but it kind of seals back up. Um, this one comes with um, a long ruler and it is magnetized, so it sticks to your board. Makes it really great when you're going to cut things like, say with a, um, a blade, um, a, like a box, I call them box cutters. Um, a craft blade, if you're gonna cut, so it kind of keeps things in place, I like it. Um, has 18 inches along the bottom it's just under 14 inches high, though my only criticism is it is not in inches on the side. It's in, what, centimeters? It is double-sided, um, so you can, now you're going to see stuff underneath, but I do store things under it. Let's see if I can get this out. Hold on. So you can flip it over. And it's the same on the other side, exactly the same. Inches at the bottom, centimeters along the, the side. And um, it's just great. It's a great place to work. It's a great place to, to measure things out. It's, a, it, it's just a good work surface. Now, I will give you this, oops, <laughs> let's come back. All right, this is just a, like a bonus, bonus points here. Um, if you see this underneath, if you happen to know somebody who is a stamping up rep, um, I, 
I don't know where they get these, but they have these paper mats that again have centimeters on one side, inches on the other. It's just paper. Um, and there's my friend that does still sell stamping up. She does great at it. And she, every year when we have a um, scrapbook like convention, she has one of these laminated at every table. And I take them because they're great <clears throat> for painting on. They're great for gluing on. They're great for doing um, all those little things on. And so I have a few of them floating around and I kind of keep them underneath so that I have them at the ready. All right, so that's my first. Let me put my ruler up so I can find it when I need it. All right, so my second thing, my second tool, hold on, I've got to reach up a little bit here. I'm gonna pull you back there, or forward, however you wanna look at that there. My handy dandy organizer. That was in my last video. I'm so excited about it. All right, so the next thing that I consider absolutely necessary in my tool arsenal is a really good pair of scissors. I do like Fiskas, though you will see there are a gazillion other different brands from Dollar Tree to Walmart. But a really good pair, these are titanium, so they keep their sharpness. And um, they're kind of, they have this gold coating. I used to have the Teflon ones for when I used Velcro, when I cut Velcro. So definitely this is a must. You know, some sort of scissors. Um, do use a box cutter, a craft knife for cutting through paper. And then in addition to having a large pair of scissors, having a smaller pair of pointed scissors is nice for fussy cutting. So um, these happen to be my Cricut ones, so they hang there very nicely. And so that's my second thing. All right, so my third tool that I absolutely love, and I'm devastated because mine has broken. Now, you can tell how old this is because it's yellow. Now they're out in blue. So I did find that like one, at least one of the pads broke. And even though you can kind of sort of glue it back together, you just have to be careful, but it doesn't really affect the, the, the usability of the, the, this. This is a crocodile big bite. Now it's a big bite because you can put something all the way through. Where's my paper? There it is. You can put something all the way through. So if you're a junk journaler, and they have this handy dandy guide right there. So if you're a junk journaler and you are making holes for um, sewing signatures, you can get all the way in at least to the second hold. Um, you might have to turn it around. And you have different options for this. Uh, one is, wait, that's the eyelet setter. This is the part that's broken. It, it usually clicks. It doesn't just slide. So there's a, the larger small, small hole puncher. Let's see if I can get you right there, like that. And then there is a slightly, let's make sure it's in, in the right place because the that's what's broken then there's a smaller hole and then the end you can set eyelets in there small eyelets so it's a wonderful multi-use tool and i'm saving up my pennies for a new one since this part is broken i mean it's still usable and this little thing comes down and changes for different sizes of eyelets and brads that you might be um, putting in. So Cropodile, that is number three on the list. Let me see what's next. Um, all right, so every good crafter um, out in the world needs to have a good cutter, a good paper cutter. So again, I've had many. I've had crickets. I've had um, Creative Memories brand. I have had a lot. Um, my favorite right now are these this Fiskas brand. And the reason I like it is the black on white. So I can see 
the numbers easy. You want one that's going to expand out because a lot of times your scrapbook papers come 12 inches, 12 by 12 or 6 by 6, but a lot of times 12 by 12. So you want something that's going to measure out. Um, the one drawback of this particular style, I mean, it's really great because it's small and light and easy to transport, but the one drawback is there is a guide wire that kind of strings along in here. Well, mine broke years and years and years ago. Now it still it still works, but I'll notice that it gives a little bit. So sometimes when I go to make a straight edge, it might just very slightly curve. So I have to be careful what I'm doing with it. Um, so I do like that one. Uh, if I'm in the mood for getting something large out, this is the one I use. My name is on it like a kindergartner because I do go to different crops and things and or used to and or card making classes or that and I didn't want to get mine mixed up with everybody else that has one just like it. So this is kind of nice too because you have your same setup it's just a flat board and the only thing that gives you a little bit of anxiety is that you're missing the lines between six and seven. But this one has uh, a bigger a bigger wheel. It will cut through quite a few pieces, you know, several pieces of paper, cardstock. Um, I would make sure whatever you did get that you got one with a replaceable blade so that when it gets dull and you cannot sharpen it anymore, you can replace that blade. All right, so there's number, what is that? Four? Four. Yes. All right. I'm putting them back as I show them to you. All right. So my next thing is you need to stick things together, right? So my favorite, my favorite adhesion of the day is this one right here, Fabrifix. Now some people put it in a different container. They put it in Sugar Bells icing containers, which you can get on Amazon or you can get at Michael's um, and I guess they're about eight dollars I think maybe for two I don't know I don't remember um, supposedly that gives you a thinner line and it's an easier plastic to squeeze I haven't had any problems I've just left mine in these I've been using them up using it up so quick so Fabrifix is for fabric so it will glue fabric to fabric and it will glue fabric to paper and it will glue paper to paper. So it's a, the, the, the positive thing about it, and that, that little saying comes from Pam at the paper outpost. She likes, she spouts that off all the time. Paper to paper, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. So I, I definitely um, give her credit for that. That's not my saying. The good thing about Fabrifix is it adheres quickly. Not as quick as hot glue but pretty fast and when you're doing something and you don't want it to move and you do have a couple a little bit of play time not much but a little bit it is a liquid glue so when I am gluing and so it can possibly give you some waviness in paper um, you can straighten it out, you can flatten out that paper, but it is liquid, so it does give you that, um, that possibility. And it can also bleed through on some of the ribbon and fabric. So you kind of have to be a little careful about that. Um, when I'm gluing paper to paper, and I don't want to run any risk of any wrinkles, I use this Scotch Create glue stick. And it's a nice big, oh, fat glue stick and it adheres really well. I like it. And if you're looking for a tape, a double stick tape, and none of these have their labels on them, I'm so embarrassed. I use the yellow scotch double stick tape. And the cheapest, easiest place to get it is um, Sam's, or used to be, I haven't been to Sam's in a while, is Sam's. And it comes, I think, six in a container for so much. Um, used to be six for, oh, I don't remember. It's been so long since I bought them. Those are my last four rolls. 
right here. So I will have to replace it eventually. Um, it, it adheres wonderfully and it is archive safe so it won't um, turn yellow on your projects. All right, so that's our stuff, our adhesion. All right, so the next thing, well, to go along with adhesion, my next tool that, you know, I couldn't live without is a glue gun. And this particular one is Sure Bonder. It's high temp. I did graduate recently to uh, full size glue guns instead of the little mini ones that you can get for under, sometimes you get them under $5 at Michael's and all. But I really wanted um, the big glue sticks and I wanted high temp. So I graduated and then as a gift, when I retired um, last summer, a friend's, one of the, my friends, um, we had like a retirement party and she gave me this cordless glue gun. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So um, this is the only one I use now. I have retired my mini ones to one is in the box with um, wax seals and I don't even know where any of the others must have about four of them running around here but I only use my cordless one it stays on a holder that is corded so you just keep popping it back to that holder and it stays all nice and um, hot for you all right, so the other thing, the other tool, my favorite tool of the day, because you know, these kind of things change. Oh my goodness. Are these um, big eyelet setters. So I have been making junk journals. That has been my new hobby. I'm gonna push that over so I don't knock anything else down out of it. Um, along with my crafts. And I needed something that would set bigger eyelets than what the crocodile did and so I went ahead and I purchased I don't know what size this is uh, maybe half inch and then this one is maybe three quarters of an inch and there's not even anything really great to tell you what it is um, I can't remember what it'll be in the uh, in the the description though because I'll link my exact order it comes with a tool that you have to use a hammer with to make a hole in whatever product you are putting this in and i put it in um so far i've used it on the cover of a junk journal and um, i have probably plans to do more of that came with a whole bunch of eyelets gold and silver uh, silver color so that was great i was looking to see if this one had the name on it because it was the same company. My goodness. Just um, different sizes. We are like stuck. Let's see if it says it on here. Um, Gromit Eyelet. Nope. Made in China. All right, let's see if I can pull it back out. Or at least pull the this card out um, grommet hole punch and it says it'll go through leather and everything oh Pax Pax cool Pax cool Pax cool and there's your user manual um, eyelet plier kit and, and it worked great I used the bigger one so far uh, punched right through uh, the cover of a little golden book was able to set things without a problem. It worked great. So that's my that's my new obsession. That's kind of one of those new tools that I have. All right, let's make sure we have all the directions back in there. All right, then let's see. Um, oh, my next thing. Wait, I have to move something out of the way so you can see it. So this isn't really a tool. But it's something I definitely, absolutely have to have uh, for me because I am a slob. So um, I have to have a cup holder and look at all the stuff on the floor. So there are many of these different kind of cup holders, but anything that attaches to my work table and um, 
sticks out away from the table so that if I knock that cup over, it's not going to get my project wet as I take a sip. This one also has, um, has a holder on it so you can attach a, uh, a bag for trash, but um, I just use a big trash can because I make too much trash for that. All right, so my next number nine, I think we're at number nine, is basic punches. Basic, basic punches. Um, and I, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, I use either a circle or a heart. That's it. That's all I use. These are creative memories. They don't make this style anymore, but any, any good brand makes a good punch is good to have. Um, this one is stamp enough. I really do like this one. I have to say I looked for more and right now they do not have circles. This one is one and three quarter. They did not have the circle punch. Um, that's my dog at the window, at the door, because he can hear something outside. He's scared of it. Um, so the Stampin' Up, the reason I wanted to tell you about Stampin' Up one is that this one will punch through laminated cardstock. Now, you may think you'll never have laminated cardstock, but um, I have found a need for it lately, and so um, it was great. And so the fact that it goes through those layers, Creative Memories did not go through those layers. The, just the fact that it did made it number one in my book. So just basic punches, basic, basic punches and shapes. All right, number 10 in that same... Um, let's see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. All right. In that same vein is a corner rounder. You, I used to have two. I don't know where the rest of them went. The other one went. Uh, I had like a scalloped one. But this just gives you, what did I do with my paper? Oh, there's my paper. This just gives you a nice little corner. Great for tags. Oh, there we go. See? Nice little rounded corner. Very simple but very effective when you're just trying to get a different look on things you're making. All right, so now I am going to, I told you about my organizer. I've done with my 10, but I, these are bonus. This we made in the last video. And what I did was I went over to, because the pegboards supposedly are coming back out at Dollar Tree, so I hope so, but I haven't been able to find too many pegs and all. So I went over to Harbor Freight. It happens to be a Harbor Freight that is right next door to one of the Dollar Trees around here. And they had a pegboard hook assortment. And there's 50 pieces. And that's what all these silver pieces are. Um, this is Dollar Tree. Those are all what's hanging there. All what's hanging there and all there except for these rings those are Dollar Tree which isn't that cute the uh, flower pot fits in them um, so for under for seven bucks you could get 50 pieces that's that's a steal that's way cheaper than buying them the the plastic ones from Dollar Tree but mm. all right so in some of my past videos the ones that I did um, the glittering i had been using a decorative cutter and it was from creative it is from creative memories and i happen to mention that it was very old and that you couldn't get it anymore and um well that's not true creative memories according to the web seems to still be alive and running and they still do sell this decorative trimmer and you can still get replacement blades too, which I was very happy to hear about. Because, you know, these things get dull. You run them through tin foil to sharpen them back up, but they still get dull. All right, so I wanted to show you a couple of other creative memories things that I still do use even today. And one of them for my smaller, I t we talked about having the trimmers. Well, this is a six inch trimmer and it's a guillotine kind of trimmer and these are really good for just um 
cutting small things. And sometimes it's so much easier to pull this little sucker out if you're trimming photos or something for a special project. And this happens to have a drawer. I've never really needed the drawer, but um, this one happens to have it. You can get six inch cutters too. Fiscus does sell them. But fis Fiscars, Fiscus, I say Fiscus. But Creative Memories does still have that. I think everything's a different color now. And this is the other thing that is really unique and cool that Creative Memory sells. They have this cutting mat, mat system and um, it is self-healing. So it will, uh, it will, you know, it doesn't cut itself in half. And then they sell all of these different cutters. Now, I have a whole bunch. I think I have a whole bunch. But there's a whole bunch. There's more. So, like, there's all kind of shapes. And you see all these rings. It, it reminds me of a spirograph. All right. So, so, you have different shapes with these different guides, these different runners. And then they sell different um, blades for it. So like there's a red, there's a green, and there's a blue. The red is the closest in, and then the other two are have, have different widths here. So basically the two little bumps right here fit into, let's see if I can get you down, fit into a guide, and you just, it rotates itself, so you just roll it around and it spins and it cuts out, of course, I use like the, clickest, the thickest cardstock around. All right, let's try again. Let's do it on the opposite side of the glitter. How about that? Can you see? Let me get you down a little bit. There we go. All right, let's try this again. All right, and just a little push. Oh, there we go. That worked. It was that glitter on the other side. And we'll cut you cut out different shapes. So it you know red would be here, blue or green would be a little bit smaller, and the other one would be a little bit smaller. But then you could go much bigger too. So these were we use these primarily these cutters to back photos when we were doing scrapbooking. But every now and then, just in different projects we do, these come in really handy. And the whole point is they still sell them. And they're still a really great project, and they're very versatile. Um, instead of, I, I have seen Fiscus has like a circle cutter, um, but you know, I, I didn't. That's just circles. This has all kinds of shapes. I mean, the ones I have, and, and they're in this nice little bag, which is great too. Um, you know, there's ovals, and there's different sizes, and then there's circles, and then. Um, heart and a picture frame and a big heart and I don't know which one of these are still out there in the world for sale but I know they have some of them I did see them on the site and then triangles and different things so um, you know they they semi store nice the mat itself was a great portable mat for when I went places and did you know, crafting, uh, because it's only, I think, 12 by 12. No, 10 by 12 and a half. So, um, so it's a great, it's a great small mat to work on. And again, it goes with those circles. All right. Aww. So that's it. There's my 10 plus bonus items, tools that I like to use in crafting. Um, just to preface just a little bit, um, I started crafting with these types of tools years ago in scrapbooking. I haven't scrapbooked in forever, um, per se. Um, I then also did card making. I didn't really enjoy card making, but I did card making because a bunch of my friends did card making, so we all would get together and do them together. Um, then I stopped really kind of like crafting except to start making things with clients. I have adult clients and they like to craft and they specifically like to paint. So um, 
like paint things, not really paint pictures, but you get my drift. So, and then I've kind of like gotten into more just crafting, crafting on my own too. So these have all stayed in my repertoire. I have used all of these products within the last month. Um, I have now, I tried to do um, glue books. I wasn't really, I wasn't good at that. It wasn't something, and the magazines are expensive. So I got, I didn't, I didn't enjoy that. And then I got into like altered books and junk journals. And I, I am there. That's where I really enjoy. I enjoy that as far as paper crafting. So that's my crafting background. But these are great tools for anybody to do anything, any kind of crafting. All right, I'm going to stop babbling now. I hope that you have a wonderful day. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget, like, subscribe, and put in the comment comments below what is your favorite crafting tool all right that's it guys see you later bye